you can see two arrows in uh, the wild and extinct ancestors of the veal you will have in a few minutes in your plates. And uh, <clears throat> so uh, this is a 16,000 years old cave painting and at that time the only way to eat this species was actually to hunt. The last arrows died uh, quite recently in Poland, about 400 years ago. And um, so for one time actually the arrows, the white form and the apple coexisted in Europe. And uh, so we can see that differently from many other extinctions that occurred in the last centuries in, in uh, everywhere in the world, the aurox was at least partially saved by domestication. Um, selective breeding during domestication modified the aurox in several ways. And uh, <clears throat> so compared to the cattle, the aurox was larger, more aggressive, and definitely with a fiercer look. And uh, you can. And since all uh, European breeds descend from the aurochs, you can see here that many other uh, differences accumulated since domestication. Uh, so, for example, in the coat colors, and of course in all the traits uh, related uh, to milk and muscle production. So, uh, cattle domestication was, was really a very important part of the Neolithic Revolution. Humans uh, became food producers. And this modified completely uh, uh, the structure of our societies and also some of our genes. Um, our approach to study um, cattle domestication and evolutionary history of the aurochs is to study the DNA of the cattle, but also the, the DNA from, from aurochs remains. And uh, remains can be bones, can be teeth, can be horns. And uh, with a few samples where DNA is not too degraded, uh, you can <laughs> do genetic typing, applying, uh, applying uh, specific protocols to avoid contamination. You have to do to replicate a lot of time soil analysis to try to avoid uh, contamination and also to get uh, uh, reliable results. And so in the last uh, few years, together with David Caramelli at the University of Florence, we were able to uh, to sequence a small fragment of the mitochondrial DNA in 19 uh, Italian aurochs dated between uh, 10 and 10,000 and 20,000 years ago. And for one of them, we are also able to completely sequence the, uh, the mitochondrial genome. And uh, so what uh, our data suggests, uh, first of all, uh, first of all, our data suggests that, <clears throat> that the aurochs in southern Europe was genetically different eh? and more variable than the aurochs in, in central and northern Europe. And the most likely explanation for that is that southern areas, we have Italy but probably it's for Spain is similar, southern areas acted as warmer refugia during the last glaciation and so also as genetic reservoir. And another in interesting thing is <coughs> is that uh, central and northern areas, since they are different from southern areas, were not recolonized after the glaciation from the south, as it occurs for many other species, but from eastern, and probably eastern Europe or Asian regions. And when we, when we compare, thanks, when we compare um, the aurochs, so based on ancient DNA data, data and uh, the modern cattle, what, you, what we observe is that the aurochs, uh, that the cattle breeds, all the cattle breeds in Europe, uh, resemble genetically to the Italian aurochs and probably also the southern <coughs> European aurochs. So this open, um, opens a, a new possibility because previous hypothesis suggested that all the breeds of bovine in Europe descend from uh, Auroxen in the Near East, in the Fertile Crescent, domesticated there, and then sort of massively exported uh, in everywhere in Europe uh, during the Neolithic. But we, on the other hand, we support another hypothesis, not just a single domestication, but a multiple domestication. So we believe uh, that introgression of aurochs and genes occurred also in Europe, probably in southern Europe, 
either forced by breeders at that time or maybe accidental, or even specific local domestication events could have occurred. And if this is true, we should uh, preserve uh, genetic variation in Southern European breeds because this may contain uh, genetic variants uh, from the European Arabs but may have also economic value. So just to finish, I'd like to point to the direction of this kind of studies. Of course, we need to analyze mitochondrial DNA in many more areas, for example in the Middle East, because data from ancient Arabs in the Middle East are not robust and in many other areas of Europe, so adding in geographical areas, but of course then we need to, to go and type nuclear genes in these ancient samples. Nuclear genes can be used to confirm or reject our hypothesis of a multiple origin domestication to the bovines. They can be used also for practical purposes for people who are interested to reconstitute the aurochs. Apparently there are people who are interested to do breeds with many aurochs characteristics. And this was the first idea by Nadis in the last century. But even now, there are people that believe that it might be interesting and important to have again a sort of a couple breed with many hours characteristics. But what we believe it might be very, very important to a lot of nuclear genes in the hours is that if you find that in the genome where differences are higher between the couple and the euros, you then are really identifying the genes responsible and implied in the domestication event. Thanks.